Hello. And how are you doing today? It's one of those wet summer's days up here in Orkney. But I do have a brand new recipe. This recipe was passed on to me by a Jehovah Witness who knocked on our door a couple of months ago. I would not have thought a Jehovah Witness would be wine making. But she was. So we had a good natter about home brew and wine and petals and things like that. So this wine I'm about to make today and show you the recipe is for rose petal wine. The rose petals are taking over, they are going mental, but I love rose bushes, I do. They have a multitude of uses. You can make wine from the rose hips, you can make mead from the rose hips, you can also make wine from the leaves themselves. Fantastic bushes, and they also look pretty when they are in full flower. Ours are, and they're oh, beautiful this time of year. They really add that sparkle and that redness, that pinkness to, to the terrain. So when the sun was shining, we went out picking rose petals. For this recipe, you need two pints of rose petals. Just lightly compress down into a pint glass, and that's a good measurement. We are using pink and white petals. If you have red, use them. If you have any other colour variation, please send me a cutting so I can plant it. But yeah, pink and white, that's what we're using. So you want to lightly compress them, that's your measurement. And then when you're in the house, you want to wash them off under the sink and remove any green fly, any other flies, caterpillars, any added extra protein from going into your wine. You don't want any other bits. Do you, boy? No. Once you've washed off your rose petals, you want to put them into your bucket, your fermenting bucket. As they don't take up much room, the two pints of petals, I would normally brew this in a one gallon bucket. Alas, I don't have any one gallon buckets. I normally use five gallon buckets. It's up to you. Use whichever suits you and whichever you have. You then want to pour in your rose petals into your bucket. Fantastic. <laughs> Then you want to add 1.3 kilos of granulated sugar to a big saucepan. And add about 4 litres of boiling water, dissolve it, give it a really good stir, and hunky dory. You're halfway there, fantastic. And give it a good stir, get that sugar all dissolved, fantastic. Once your sugar is all dissolved in your liquid and all stirred in and lovely, you want to let it cool down to room temperature and then pour it over your rose petals into your bucket. Fantastic. You ready? Should I do that? Once your rose petals, the 1.3 kilos of sugar and your water up to about four and a bit litres of water have been added to your bucket. A few more things you need to add that just make all the difference to the wine. This rose petal wine makes a lovely dry white. Fantastic on a summer's day, fantastic with your barbecues, with light salads. It has a very subtle taste. It has a very unique, gentle, it's a very delicate wine. A wine that you just want to sit outside with a barbecue and a plate of potato salad whilst the burgers are frying and the sausages are banging away. The next thing I'm adding is a good squirt of lemon juice. The citric acid in the lemon juice really helps to bring out the vibrancy of the wine. The rose petals don't have a great deal of taste on their own, so you need to really help and encourage that flavour to come through. And lemon juice, citric acid, really does the job. You could use powdered citric acid, but I find it's much cheaper and easier to have a few of these lemon juice squeezy bottles in stock. All round, general, in the kitchen cupboard, useful thing to have. Big squirt of that is going in right now. And then, I'm adding my yeast. I'm using a Cross My Loof orange wine yeast. I'm using orange because it complements the good squirt of lemon juice and also the rose really gets boosted by the orangey yeast. It's one of those yeasts that is great for petal wines. I used it in my gorse flower mead. I've used it in 
rose hip leaf wine, it really adds a new dimension to flower wines. That's why I'm using an orange wine yeast. A good thing about cross my loaf wine yeasts is they have all the nutrient added that it needs to do a five gallon batch in one sachet. All the yeast, all the nutrients, it's fantastic. You don't need to add any extra nutrients. It's easy, it's one sachet, in it goes. Brilliant. Once the yeast has been added and your squirt of lemon juice, all you need to do is put a lid on with an airlock in and set it aside in a warm place for three or four days. Let it ferment, let it bubble, let it do its thing. So set it aside and I'll see you in three days time. <laughs> Well, hello, and how are you doing? Three days have passed, and the wine, the rose petal wine, is looking amazing. I've been stirring it daily. I've been giving it a good dose of oxygen going in there. It's looking fantastic, smelling brilliant. Dee described the aroma as being very, very pink. And she's right. It is like pink Turkish delights. Not the chop. Not the type that's covered in chocolate, but the real proper Turkish delight. It's pink, it's rosy, it's it's arrogance. It's definitely an arrogant aroma. I'm so surprised. It's, it's going to be awesome. This is going to be a very delicate a summer wine, a summer session wine, where you can go out in this garden, have a barbecue and your salads. It's going to match a sunny day in the garden. And I can't wait. So come on, let's get on with the next stage. And what we want to do now is transfer the liquid from the primary fermentation vessel into a demijohn. So we need to strain off all those rose leaves and get the juice into a demijohn. Brilliant. So you want to grab your trusty sieve. One of the winemaker's essential pieces of equipment is a sieve. Great for scooping, great for grabbing, filtering, getting all of your bits of fruit and veg and leaves out of your juice that you want. I always have a few of these on standby. The colour of the wine is looking fantastic as well. Pink, bright, vibrant. It's going to be a great sipping wine in summer. There wasn't that much sugar added, only 1.3 kilos. So this isn't going to be a strong wine around the 12% mark, which means it can be a great session wine for your summer lunches out in the garden, your picnics as well. Fantastic, right then. Into the demijohn he goes. You want to grab your clean, sanitised demijohn and a funnel. And I can see why the Jehovah Witnesses like making this stuff. Are they allowed to drink? Are they meant to drink? Help I don't get them into trouble. I'm really impressed with the colour of this. And I have a glass left over, so I'm going to have a quick see what I think. I'm so surprised at how flavoursome it is. Those two pints of rose petals have really, really done their job and infused their flavour into the gallon of liquid. I think this would make a really fantastic sparkling wine, or a mead, or even a sparkling mead with rose flowers in. Sparkling rose petal wine. Yeah, a nice, pink, a nice bit of pink bubbly, I think that would work really well. Or maybe a mead, a sparkling mead. I have ideas, I will work on these recipes and hopefully next year create some more because it's fantastic. I'm amazed. I wouldn't have thought it would be this good. But it is. Wow. Right then. I'm really impressed with petal wines at the moment. The gorse flower wine I made and the gorse flower mead I made are coming along really well. And this petal wine, the rose petal wine, amazes me yet again. So, add there, Doc. And if you would like to try the gorse flower mead, or the gorse flower wine, it's up above. Have a watch, and I'll see you really soon for the next recipe. 
五官 review。好，分了，拜拜。